Hello students, welcome to this vertical integration session between biochemistry and pharmacology. Myself Dr. Nilesh Raj, pharmacology faculty. And I am Dr. Nilesh Chandra, <laughs> I am the biochemistry faculty. So together we will be presenting uh, you one uh, unique scenario where we have a very good integration between the uh, biochemistry and pharmacology. Just to make a note, uh, increasingly we are seeing questions where a question is based on more than one subject two three sometimes even four subjects will come into play you will have to collect information from one subject apply it to give a, get an answer from the second subject and then ultimately apply it to maybe a third or a fourth subject that is why this integrated sessions are being created for you so just try to see how we are utilizing this information to reach the answer one subject helping the other one and finally reaching the answer so i'll quickly read out the question for you so in front of you on the screen we have a graph the graph shows one of the common types of enzyme inhibition now so when you look at the graph you will have to first identify the type of enzyme inhibition after that the second part of the question is which of the following drugs is well known to act via the enzyme inhibition shown in the graph so first you have to identify the type of inhibition and then correlate with the pharma part the options are pantoprazole enalapril neostigmine and lithium so these are some of the options which have been given so i'll quickly talk about the types of different types of enzyme inhibition and then i'll give it over to dr nilesh and he will talk about the different drugs and what type of inhibition they are following so that you can see how the two parts are getting interrelated uh, very quickly for reference the graph which is shown in the question is line weaver bug plot this is commonly used to study the enzyme inhibition we compare a normal uninhibited reaction with a reaction which is undergoing inhibition and then we see certain changes in the graph the graph that we use here is also known as the double reciprocal plot why it is called a double reciprocal plot because you will see both the axes have reciprocal values on the x-axis we have one upon substrate concentration whereas on the y-axis we have one upon velocity so both are reciprocal values that is why we call it the double reciprocal plot and commonly we use it to discuss the reversible type of inhibitions we have two types of inhibition reversible and irreversible so here we discuss the reversible type of inhibitions these are of three types as you very well know competitive inhibition the uncompetitive inhibition and the non-competitive inhibition these are the three common types of the reversible inhibition which will come in your exam let me quickly cover them one by one starting with the very commonly asked competitive inhibition before we go to each of the type of inhibition very quickly some points on the graph the point where the graphs will cross the y-axis this value is one upon v max this is the a place where the graph is cutting the y-axis so it is called the y-intercept you can see it is written here the y-intercept similarly where the graph is touching the x-axis this is minus 1 upon km this is the x-intercept so these are the points where the graph is interacting with the axis points okay so now you can see the blue line blue line is the graph which is uninhibited reaction and then we have another graph which is showing the effect of the inhibitor so what you have to note normally when you talk about the inhibitors you remember what is the change in the vmax and in the km which we are applying in the graph here for the competitive inhibition what happens there is change only in the km the vmax remains the same that is why you see the point on the y-axis where we are actually seeing the vmax that point will be the same why vmax is not changing so the y axis point will remain the same but there is change on the x axis why because the km value is changing so minus 1 by km value will also change so we find a change on the x axis so if no change on y axis but there is change on the x axis then we are talking about competitive inhibition before i do uncompetitive i'll go to the non competitive inhibition in non competitive inhibition by definition the km is not changed by definition the km is not changed it means km is on which axis it is on the x axis so the point on x axis will be the same but there will be change on the y axis 
so v max will decrease correspondingly 1 by v max will increase so you find the 1 by v max value is increased in case of non competitive inhibition and lastly we have the uncompetitive inhibition here both km and v max both will change that is why we don't have any common point neither on the x axis nor on the y axis the common point is not there so when you are seeing the two graphs the uninhibited and the inhibited graph where none of the points are common then we are dealing with the uncompetitive inhibition in terms of enzyme and the inhibitor reaction the last point which i want to tell you is when we talk about competitive inhibition then the substrate and inhibitor both will attach at the active site all right because the competition is there competition is for what for the active site so both of them get attached at the active site in non competitive inhibition the inhibitor will attach at allosteric site it is not competing it is not competing with the substrate uh, we cannot uh, restore the vmax when we have this type of inhibition in case of uncompetitive inhibition this is the most rare type the inhibitor doesn't interact with the enzyme directly it waits for the formation of enzyme substrate complex this is where the inhibitor will get attached okay so these are some points about the inhibition particularly the reversible inhibition that you should know and how to identify the different types of reversible inhibition using the graph after this i'll hand over to sir and he'll quickly talk about the different drugs that are there in the option and which type of inhibition the different drugs are going to follow sir over to you sure, sir sir so guys as uh, sir has clearly gave a picture I think uh, I have learnt a lot of points from what uh, Sarah has already been explaining. Uh, this is actually a war between three major inhibitions: competitive, non-competitive, and competitive. So the question here is: they have given a graph. Which drug is going to be matching with the graph which they have given? Simpler. So we are going to see about every individual drugs. What is the mechanism behind it? And we are going to again go back to uh, Lechandra sir, and we'll see what is be the answer for this question. First, let's talk about pantoprazole. What is pantoprazole, guys? Everyone knows prazole, right? Prazole means this belongs to proton pump inhibitors. Prazole drugs belongs to proton pump inhibitor. Proton pump inhibitors are drugs which can be used for the treatment for gastric ulcer directly. So uh, to say, this is the current drug of choice for any type of uh, uh, peptic ulcer disease. So uh, we have other prazoles like omeprazole. We have lansoprazole. Uh, the newer ones we have rabiprazole also. Esomeprazole also is going to be there in the market. All these drugs is going to inhibit the proton pumps in a non-competitive manner. Non-competitive manner. This is a non-competitive inhibitor, and that's also I think we used to call them suicide inhibitors, right, sir? So there suicide. Some, inhibitors. Uh, some mechanism of suicide inhibition which is non-competitive, but suicide will mainly go into the irreversible. Irreversible. So uh, we generally don't uh, use the terms competitive, non-competitive, uncompetitive with the irreversible. Irreversible. We use different terms when we are talking about the irreversible inhibition. Great, sir. Now let's move on to the next option. The next option is enalapril. So enalapril, what is this mechanism? This drug is again a pril drug, right? If a drug name is going to be ending with pril, it belongs to ACE inhibitor. ACE enzyme, angiotensin converting enzyme is going to be inhibited. Small additional point over here, guys. See, if a drug name is going to end with pril, if a drug name is ending with pril, it is an ACE inhibitor. If a drug name is ending with tril, it is an NEP inhibitor or neutral endopeptidase inhibitor. So, pril drugs are AC inhibitor, tril drugs are NEP, neutral endopeptidase inhibitors, which includes we have two major drugs guys, sacubitril, rasicodotril. Sacubitril is a drug which can be used for congestive cardiac failure and rasicodotril is a drug which can be used for secretory diarrhea. Uh, neostigmine, we will talk about competitive or non-competitive in few minutes. So, let us talk about uh, uh, neostigmine now. Neostigmine again is a drug which is going to inhibit acetylcholinesterase. It is an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. Lithium on the other hand is it's a dual inhibitor. It tends to inhibit two different enzymes. One is GSK3. GSK3 enzymes is going to be inhibited and uh, uh, the major inhibition with this GSK3 is going to be in the uncompetitive manner. This is an uncompetitive inhibitor. This is an uncompetitive inhibitor and also one more enzyme which uh, lithium is going to inhibit is IMPase, inositol monophosphatase. 
inositol monophosphatase also is going to be inhibited in an uncompetitive manner. So, as sir clearly told, uncompetitive inhibitors wait for the enzyme and substrate to interact and that is going to be inhibited by uncompetitive inhibitors. A classical example which we have seen in the market is currently lithium. We have also other drugs which is there in the market sir, which can be also be uncompetitive, but uh, the lithium is currently being used in the market. So, uh, we have seen about the first one, we have seen about the last one. What about the B and C options, enalapril and neostigmin? Please make a note that both of these things are competitive inhibitors. Both of these drugs are competitive inhibitors. As sir uh, also has been uh, regarding this KM and Vmax values, right? So, KM and Vmax values is going to be increased and it is going to be unchanged in terms of competitive inhibition. Simply we can also put, just write down increase, flat line and decrease. 1 and 2 is for competitive inhibitors, 2 and 3 is for non-competitive inhibitor, which means KM is going to be increased, Vmax is going to be unchanged for competitive inhibitors. Whereas 2 and 3, KM is going to be unchanged, Vmax is going to be decreased for non-competitive inhibitors, right. Now, I think uh, this is a better area to just ask sir's opinion regarding, I have given what is the drug, what is the mechanism. Now, let us talk about, uh, I hope majority of you would have guessed what will be the answer. I just uh, uh, give this to sir, sir. So, now sir, this already yes. we have covered, see, so when you look at the two graphs, this is the uninhibited and this is the inhibited graph. So, what you find, what is the common point in the two graphs? We can see the common point is there on the x-axis and on the x-axis we said the value that we are getting is minus 1 by km. This means the KM is not changing and like sir said, when the KM is not changing, only the Vmax is changing. In that case, we are looking at the non-competitive inhibition, okay. So, your answer in this case should be pentaprazole which is following the non-competitive inhibition. Fantastic. And also, if you come across any other non-competitive inhibitors in the option, that also is going to be the answer because that is what its nature is. That is what KM Vmax is going to be changed up. So, whenever so, you are revising the pharma, whenever you are doing the drugs which are acting on the enzymes, just spend 2 or 3 seconds extra, try to internalize the mechanism of action and just visualize these graphs that we have shown that where you would like to place that particular enzyme so that you do not spend that extra 3 seconds in the exam. That will save you the time in the exam. During revision, just try to correlate the two factors that where the particular molecule is going to fall when we are talking about the enzyme inhibition per se. So, uh, thank you so much. Nilesh is signing off. Both Nilesh signing off. <laughs> Best of luck and take care.